Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Well, from the title, you know that this isn't about meters. <laughs> I just left this stuff up here. I finished that video. But guys, I want to do a microcap tutorial video. I haven't done for one for a long time. Now, if you don't have microcap, um, I'll put a link down below, okay? Uh, you can still get the full version. Some people only got... They didn't get the full version. They didn't think you could still get it or something. Now, MicroCap's been around for a long time. It's a super mature program. It was, what, $4,700 before the guy retired and gave it away. And this has been a few years now. And, you know, so it's fully mature. As long as Windows doesn't screw up and make software where it's not compatible, this thing's going to be around for a while. Well, anyway, there's a bunch of circuits, a bunch of parts in the libraries and I'm going to show you another one it's a tube and I'm going to and you know you can pick it what circuit you want but I'm going to kind of show you how you can manipulate the tool how you can do transient analysis AC analysis and yeah it's going to be a fairly short video so let's just jump into this thing okay all right guys let's do it all right guys here we are microcap and I've opened it up and I've got a schematic here, and it's a tube amplifier that I did a video on a while ago. I'll put the links down to my uh, to these videos. There's a playlist with a bunch of them, okay? And today's video, we're going to come up here to the help, okay? Then down here, uh, where is it? Sample circuits. And look at all these circuits. There's tons of circuits. We're going to come down here to vacuum tubes. And I want to show you, I think it's this one here. Let's look at this guy, vacuum tube circuit. Yeah, so this is just a 6L6 tube, vacuum tube. And we have voltage right here coming in. Here's our signal. And, and then we have a grid right here. It's got 100 volts. Then up here on the plate, we have uh, a 200 volts comes through this coil, okay? So DC-wise, if nothing's happening, we'll have 200 volts sitting here. And then once we start moving things, then we can go, uh, you know, up and down. So we're going to look at this, okay? So out here, this is our output signal coming through this transformer. This is the coupling of, of these two coils, okay? L1, L2. If I double click on that, it kind of shows this, shows L1, L2 coupling 0.98. It should be 0 0.98, right? Okay, so, and uh, here, let's go ahead and run a simulation. Now, it says run transient AC or DC, okay? So first of all, let's just run an AC transient. So go transient, and we're gonna come up here. See, there's these three up here, right? Then you have these probe transients, ACDC, where you can probe things. Uh, I'll show you that in a moment. But right now, let's just go to AC. I want to show you a few things. Now, see, this one right here says it's going to run a frequency from 100 hertz to 1E8. Okay, so 100 meg, I guess. And a number of points and so on. There's some different things here. But down here, we're going to have a graph, and it's going to be the X axis is going to be frequency. The Y is going to be V out, and it's going to go across this range, same range that we're, that we're running up here. And then we have our Y range, okay? So, and this is in volts. It's not in decibels, okay? So it's 40 volts to zero uh, volts and eight volts. Uh, increments. So anyway, let's just run it and see what we get. There we go. So now this is V out, right? It's right down here, showing red V out. And there we go. There's a curve. So uh, low frequency, it starts off around 10 volts. Okay. If I hold the cursor there, you'll see it's 11.5. And then it goes up to about one kilohertz. It's, it's up here at, let's see, one kilohertz, so just hold the cursor there, uh, 30 volts, and then it kind of peaks maybe at 31, 
and then at 10k is dropping so our bandwidth is only about 1 to 10k now this is just we're just looking at the tube when you're just running it without any putting any circuitry around it right just just a tube so kind of characterizes it right now here if i come over here on this tab down here we can look at the schematic we're looking at voltage on the out okay so if i come back over here okay if i pull this uh the limits table back up okay um and all right so here we got our limits right now what i can do is i can do an add let's add a thing and see v out well let's look at v in okay there's v in and as i type it in it says oh i found one is this it and i just i'll just double click on that and just say yeah that's the one and we're going to get give the same x y parameters now i could do different y's for this but um i'll show you this in just a moment here let's just do this this run up and look it's down here it's way down here and if i just hover here that's about you know 8.896 you know it's probably one volt right okay we got another red graph here so i could come up here and i can come over here and say let's change that to another color let's make a blue and I'll make the text, the curve and the text blue. So apply that. And there we go. We got a blue line and right here, VN. V out's over here. So, but that's kind of hard to read, right? And what if there's a little wiggle? We can't even see that because it, the scale just makes it so we can't see it. So let's come back up to our, our deal here and let's go to limits and it pulls our table back up. And this time, let's put this on a different graph. We'll put graph two. And then we'll say run. Now look, we got two graphs. So now this one comes across and it's like one volt all the way out to about 100K and then it drops down. But wait, hold on a sec. It's still about one volt because if you look over here on the left, this, this graph is changing just infinitely small it's very small it's like one volt here and over here it's like point you know it's 0 0.9999 you know so it's essentially one volt all the way across so that's just one way to prove that okay is to actually zoom in on it like we just did and do that okay let's go back to ac and go to our limits table again and then this time well here let's look at the schematic I want to see this voltage right here, what's happening here. So that's called the plate. So let's try that again, AC, AC limits. And let's do another add. And let's call this one plate. So I got V out, VN, another VN. But I'm going to go in parentheses here and type in plate. And it should come up with something because it exists so that's the one okay so over here on the right you see it's on the same as graph two so it's it's gonna be a pretty small thing well we could try that and see what it looks like okay let's just do that I could go to three and make it a third table but let's let's just look okay so here's our one volt down here we know that's one volt and here's what this guy looks like but if we want to see the definition of this one volt, how it has that slight wiggle in comparison to these three, we can go back to AC limits and we can come down to it here and say, let's make our own graph. So three. Okay, so now we got three. So yeah, so there you go. So this one, you know, starts off what around 27, 31 volts, I guess. It's like 101 volts here. It peaks up here at 268 and drops back down to about 24.8. So there you go. Now this is a cross frequency, but what if we just want to see what that signal looks like in, in real time? Okay, so let's go 
up here to AC and let's say exit this analysis. And let's go ahead and run this transient analysis right here. So let's go back up to analysis. And this time instead of running, well here, you know what, let's go ahead and start transient. Let's just see what they got for us. Okay, oh, okay, they're gonna do the V in and the V plate. They didn't do V out, but let's go. Okay, it's already set up, so uh, let's go ahead and run that. There we go. And so now we have, you know, our VN right here. It's going up to one volt, down to negative one volt. So there we go. And over here, we're going just above 300 volts. And all right, guys, so let's, let's do this a little bit different way, okay? Um, let's go transient and let's say exit trans. All right, so we quit that analysis. Let's try this probe transient. So I kind of like the probe, but uh, let's see a little bit more of the circuit. So let's go zoom out and let's go plate this way. There we go. It's a big swing. And you know what? I'm going to turn off the plate and we're starting off the small signal. Here we go, plus or minus one volt. All right, so now let's go to the plate. And so we know this is plus or minus one volt, this little guy down here. And the plate looks like it's going down to almost 100 volts, almost to 300. So it almost comes down to the value of this guy. And then it swings, and then it's got this 200 volts that it can swing. So it's swinging. About 200 volts okay now let's go look at the output and there's output so there's all the guys on top of each other okay now i want to show you one more thing let's go to scope and that's uh, this same y-axis is check marked so let's go ahead and uncheck that okay now what i need to do is come over here and click on one of these guys and okay, so I turned off the plate. Here's the input and the output. They're almost in phase, a little bit off from each other, right? There's a little bit of a phase shift. Um, and now if I go back to the plate, there's a definite phase shift between the plate. Now, what's going on here? Let's turn the plate color, different color here. That's because I turn it on and off. It just, sometimes it does that, so. Let's go make one of them red. We'll choose that color. Say apply. There we go. So you see the three axes on the left. And we see down here VN is blue. So it's it's going one to one. One minus one volt to plus one volt. V out screen. And it's going down to minus 32 up to plus 32 almost. And the plate is red and it goes down to almost 100 and almost 300 so and then you know of course we can do all the play with this zoom in look at all these things like this if you want i'll just zoom in on a few just to remind you and you can look at the phase shifts and you can measure that with these things i've shown in other videos but just making this one quick and short just showing you how you can play with this guy to uh, look at signals. You can change voltages. You can change these parameters to see how this tube behaves. So that's pretty cool, right? Hey, I said this wasn't going to be about meters. <laughs> but I did want to show you that I have one of these insulation meters from Fluke 2. Now, somebody painted this red. I bought it used. Uh, used to be yellow. But anyway, insulation testers. I've got a couple. I got another brand that competes with this one. So I've done some videos showing these things, but I need to do a comparison of the two. And what do you guys think? You need 500 volts, 1,000 volts with this. So stay tuned. I'll do a review on, on those. Let me know in the comments if you guys really want to see it. And I'll move it up in the, in the line of videos. I got so many videos I got to put out. Let's get back to this one. All right, guys, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, you can just grab a part, like a tube, like in this case, put the voltages on it, and play around with it, and characterize just the tube itself. And you can try to work on the model of the tube to see if it behaves like you think it should. 
in real life, right? So you can play around with the model and, um, and yeah, and then you can look at the waveforms and see if it's behaving correctly. So there you go, guys. Let me know what you think. Uh, two big thumbs up, my patrons, my YouTube members. Really appreciate you guys. And Danny for being a team member. Thank you. Uh, and anybody that wants to hit that super thank you button down there. Appreciate that. Um, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, and you become a member, a patron or a YouTube member for as little as a dollar a month, I believe. So anyway, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.